Hello, and welcome back. So, before you say anything, before you say it, I know it's been a while. Sue me. So, just do, let's just do a quick recap. Let me grab my things. What I'm trying to do at the moment, what I'm trying to do with this project is put one of these, Raspberry Pi Zero, into one of these, which is a Wii U gamepad. So, the main driver for this project, or the main driver in choosing how I do this and how I approach this, pop this down a sec, uh, the main driver in choosing how I approach this and how I go about doing this is going to be, is going to come down to power consumption. So batteries are going to take up even um, a relatively high capacity, say 2.2 amp power um, lithium ion, lithium polymer battery is still going to take up room. And there's a lot of stuff to cram into this. There's a lot of stuff to cram into this shell. And there's a lot of plastic support structure, like I don't know if you can see any of this stuff around the back here. There's a lot more stuff in the bottom half of the shell as well. So the key thing is I need to reduce power consumption and I need to reduce all the wires trailing around the place. So, so to that end, I've made a couple of decisions with this already. So first of all, I'm going to use a five inch screen that I bought uh, with a nice HDMI interface on there. I'm gonna use a five inch screen um, and this is purely down to the power consumption. I do have a seven inch screen as well. Um, that's gonna be a little bit tricky because the shell here uses, I think it's like 6.3 or 6.5, I can't remember, but either way, it's not a seven inch screen. Um, so that would mean I have to modify a lot of the back of this, I have to get the Dremel out, cut shit out and all that stuff. And I don't, I don't really want to do that if I can, if I can avoid it at all. Uh, the other thing is just power draw because this got a smaller screen area, it's got less to power. Problem that creates, however, is, first of all, me throwing my stuff on the floor. That's, uh, that's a problem it creates. Um, problem it creates is obviously the screen is too small for the hole. That's not necessarily a problem when you have a 3D printer because I've gone away and, uh, sorry, one second, get in there, you bugger, come on, let's get in there. So I've designed a bezel uh, which will sit around the screen and as you can see there, um, it kind of nicely solves that problem for you. I need the finish on this, uh, just uh, the finish on this isn't great. I don't know if you can see that on camera here, but we've got some, say, uh, we've got some vertical lines here. And that's because I'm um, I'm using masking tape here and any other issues with the finish, like the weird kind of appearance, purely because I'm using masking tape. Um, but I can get some um, ultra-wide capped-on tape, which is a thing I'm going to have to do. Capped-on tape will be perfectly smooth, um, so you get a much better surface finish on there. So that's one thing I've decided. So let me just... Uh, pop my things away a moment. Mm, it's stuck. It will come out. Mm, stuck. Make that too well, obviously. Okay. Okay, so the other thing I decided was that I want to use, reuse the original controls that come with the Wii U gamepad. I just put I just put the shell away. I need it now. It would be, it would be fairly trivial to create some kind of PCB that sits behind these, um, to which I mount micro switches, and I do this all with micro switches. That would be relatively easy. But that's gonna, that's gonna mean that there's a lot of cabling needed. What I want to do is reuse the original control, uh, the original control housings here. Um, because that's just going to be a lot neater, I think, personally. Um, problem with that, however, and how well you can see this on camera, um, but I'm going to um, show you a high resolution photo in a moment. The problem with that, however, is that with the exception of the analog sticks, um, all of the control connections on the Wii U gamepad are routed out to these 10 pin uh, flat flex cables, and that's a half millimeter pin pitch, which is fairly small. So I can't work with that. At this point, I don't know whether or not I want to go via a microcontroller um, or wire the controls directly into the, the Pi's GPIO header. Um, a microcontroller would be fairly easy. Um, 
So we've got the USB connector here on the back, at least on my revision, this is the version without the camera connector. Uh, you've got D plus and D minus connections here. So instead of having to solder to the bastard micro USB connector there, uh, we can just solder to these pads on the back. That makes connecting up an external microcontroller that a little bit easier. Um, the advantage with that is that an external microcontroller like uh, Arduino Pro Mini or Teensy, it presents itself to the Raspberry Pi as a USB HID device. So I don't need to write any custom drivers, I don't need to write any code, I just plug the damn thing in and the Pi goes, hey, hey look, there's a joystick over there. And it's got all the axes and all the buttons I need, which would be fantastic. Obviously, that adds an additional component into the system, which means that there's more complexity and potentially more power draw. Whereas if I go directly to the GPIO, I'm gonna have issues with the analog sticks. Um, you're not gonna be able to get the full true range of motion that you would by using a USB HID interface, but you're going to have fewer components and potentially less power draw. So to test that, I need something to take these connections on what I'm calling the bastard connector um, out to something that you can work with, say 0.1 inch pin pitch headers with the fairly standard size. So this is what I prepared earlier. I did exactly that. I designed these little PCBs. Um, so we've got 0.1 inch pin, 0.1 inch pins, 0.1 inch pitch pins over here, and then over here we've got landing pads here for a flat flex connector. Now you might be able to see I did kind of screw this one up a little bit. Let me bring that up closer. Hopefully this focuses. Um, the idea was that the cable, that the flat flex cable comes in here, and as you see, there's not much space between where I've got the pads and the edge of the board. Mm, idiot. Whatever. Problem, however isn't necessarily my PCB design um, and here's where the here's where I'm going to pull up the high resolution photo um, because it's a lot easier to show that way clearly I cannot solder half millimeter pin pitch surface mount connections now a few we a few months ago I tried this using a 40 pin breakout connector for uh, for an LCD panel um, and I totally made a hash of that as well but I thought okay maybe 10 pins fewer pins to work with not at all. No amount of flux or uh, solder, what's the word, solder braid um, would help me there. I just, I can't do it. I haven't soldered surface mount really anyway. I've got no experience in soldering surface mount. Um, and to get to that point where I can confidently solder connectors like this is going to take me a while, obviously. So there needs to be a bit of a rethink on that part. This doesn't kill the idea, however. Um, I wasn't. I was hoping not to have to get to this to do this so soon, but it looks like I'm going to have to. So I got the PCBs made by a company called Oshpark. You may have recognised it because purple. If you see the chances are, if you see a hobbyist PCB that they've made and it's purple, chances are it's from these guys because that's 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 kind of their thing. Um, what Oshpark also do is a service called Osh Stencils. Um, now, if you're not if you don't know what a stencil is. Um, if you don't know what a solder stencil is, uh, it might be worth, uh, you know what, there are a ton of videos out there, so I'm just going to cover it briefly. So when it comes to surface mount soldering, um, it's all done by machine. So what happens is, uh, let me take my board here, um, you can be a board like this, that goes into one machine, that machine lays down a solder over the top of it, a stencil over the top of it, uh, some solder paste is squirted on that, the stencil has cutouts for all of the solder pads, um, all of your surface mount solder pads. And what it does then is you have like a, like a squeegee type affair where it just wipes off the excess, takes away the stencil, and all you're left then with is solder paste on the surface mount pads. Now Oshpark, as well as doing PCBs, also do a service to make PCB set to make uh, solder stencils for hobbyists. So instead of having to do it in a machine, I can put my stencil over the top here, uh, clamp it down, hold it down, and then I can get a small amount of solder paste and a little squeegee tool and do exactly the same thing. And then I will have solder paste on there. And then obviously you need to reflow that solder paste. What happens in um, a real PCB factory is that this moves on down the line, goes into the pick and place machine, the pick and place machine sticks all your components on, and it goes into your reflow oven, and your reflow oven will um, will heat it up to the point where the solder melts, take it out, and it's done. So, 
What I'm going to need to do then, I think, is make my own reflow oven. Now this isn't exactly, uh, it's not as um, a scary a prospect as it sounds, it's quite easy to do using a toaster oven. Um, and I planned ahead a few months ago with this and got myself hold of a solid state relay for just this, for just such a purpose. Got myself a solid state relay just for that purpose. Which is great. Um, so, I cannot solder this by hand, um, but I really want to use, I really don't want to throw my PCB under my desk, I'll have to go get that in a minute, Muppet, um, I really want to reuse the original controls because it's going to be so much neater and so much easier, but for me to get any further with that I need to have this breakout PCB, I need to know what all of these connections are for. I need to know what each and every one of these pins is for. I then need to plug that into a microcontroller and test it. I then need to route that into the GPIO pins and test it that way and test the power drawer and test everything. And I can't do that until I solve the problem of the bastard connector here. So, this project is going to take me a while because I'm doing this in my spare time as and when and I do have a life and I do have I do other things and I haven't got unlimited money to throw at this so I'm going to apologize now for not uploading videos in a timely fashion but it's not dead I'm not going to kill this thing off um, something else I'm going to start working on uh, in the meantime something I started thinking about um, again it would help if I really have these things to hand but never mind uh, where are we? Sorry about that. So, what started off this whole thing about making, about looking into this, about this project as well, was when I bought this thing, which is, uh, as you can see here, it's uh, the uh, Mega Drive Arcade Ultimate Portable, basically a handheld emulator system for the Sega Mega Drive, and you can slot in uh, an SD card and stick more ROMs on it, but it comes with 30 games in there. So, I wanted to put a Raspberry Pi in here. This is too small. This has no room whatsoever. So. I think I can do it, however, if I design my own custom PCB. So, what I thought about doing a while ago was using, and uh, I'll try and get this out at the moment. I really should prepare this stuff beforehand, but I don't. I'm lazy. I'm lazy. What are you going to do? Now, what I thought about using was this, which is the Raspberry Pi compute module. So the advantage with this thing is that although the Pi Zero is, uh, well, it's it's roughly the same size. The Pi Zero is roughly the same size. For the, for the average consumer, for the hobbyist, this has obviated the need for this. However, the advantage with this is that I get to determine where all the connections go. I design the PCB, I design where all my things go. So in the case of, I'll just pop this away, this, uh, there we go. So in the case of stuffing a Raspberry Pi into this thing, if I design a carrier PCB for the compute module, um, I can determine, I can have one single PCB uh, with all of the connections and all of the parts I need on there do that, obviously I'm going to need to do surface mount work and a lot of it because of the size constraints. Um, hence, planning ahead um, some months ago, getting myself the solid state relay for doing the, the uh, homemade, what do you call those things? Reflow ovens. So, getting back to a point. To take, why do I keep putting these things away? So, to take this project any further, I need to build myself a reflow oven and have my reflow oven solder the connectors, solder the, uh, the mounts for the bastard connector because I, I, just, I cannot do that myself. 0.1 inch uh, through hole stuff, no problem at all. Larger surface mount stuff, I could probably do that by hand as well, but for the really small stuff, and I really do need the small stuff, I have to get my reflow oven up and running. So, it is going to take time. I'm not going to abandon this project. I do want to see this damn thing finished. It's been, Christ, nine months, ten months maybe since I started thinking about all this in the first place. And yeah, it's I haven't really got anything to show for it. But fuck it, whatever. I do want to finish this, uh, and I will. So thank you for bearing with me so far. 
I've gone on long enough now, I always ramble on far too much and never actually do anything. Um, yeah, I'll just shut up now. Bye.